Hello, this is Miss Moore, and today during chemistry, we're going to discuss ionization constants. Today's essential question. What is the ionization constant, and how is it calculated and used? Um, for today's lecture, you probably want to have your calculators handy. All right, the acid ionization constant. So the ionization constant, which is symbolized as Ka, for an acid is actually just an equilibrium constant, but it's the equilibrium constant specifically for an acid, thus Ka, equilibrium constant acid. So we have this equation here, this equilibrium equation, Ha, again, some hydro or hydrogen ion connected to some anion in aqueous form in water produces H3O or hydronium and the anion. So then what is the ionization constant for an acid? Well, do you remember the equilibrium constant formula? Ionization constant formula is basically the same thing. So we have here Ka equals the concentration of the hydronium or H plus either way to its coefficient times the concentration of the anion to its coefficient divided by the concentration of the acid. And the reason, so it's basically, oh, let's, let's go back. So that's really just the concentration of the products over the concentration of the reactants. Just like the equilibrium constant. Um, and the reason that in the reactant side we don't have water is because water is a liquid. Remember, equilibrium constant is only for gases and aqueous. So the larger the Ka, the stronger the acid. Um, so why would that be? Well, remember, thinking about equilibrium constant, a larger K favors the product side, meaning it's going this way, which means greater ionization, right? More of this, which means you're gonna have a stronger acid. Okay, so the larger the Ka, the stronger the acid because a larger Ka favors the product side, which means a larger ionization. Okay. On to the base ionization constant. Good news, not much different than the acid ionization constant. So the ionization constant Kb for a base is simply the equilibrium constant K, but specifically for a base, thus Kb. All right, so we have this equilibrium um, equation here, NH3 plus H2O producing NH4 plus OH. Um, we know NH3 is a base because if we look at, if we do a Bronsted-Lowry evaluation, we note that from reactant to product side, NH3 gains a H, making it the base, and NH4 is then the conjugate acid, making the water the acid because it loses an H, making OH the conjugate base. Okay, so we're going to be we're going to be calculating Kb because we know NH3 is a base. So the Kb equation is Kb equals concentration NH4 times concentration of OH to the coefficients, which again, just like K, is concentration of the products divided by concentration of NH3, which is concentration of the reactants. And again, we're ignoring water because it's a liquid and not part of the equilibrium expression. And just like with Ka, the larger the Kb, the stronger the base, because the larger Kb favors the product side, meaning a greater or larger ionization. Okay, let's try our newfound skills um, doing an ionization constant practice problem. So the question is, what is the pH of 0.5 molar HF solution at 25 degrees Celsius? 
And in this case, Ka equals 7.1 times 10 to the fourth. All right, so the first thing we need to do is write the ionization reaction. So we're going to be talking about the acid HF and it's in the aqueous form because we're going to mix it with liquid water and that's going to produce what? Well, H3O and um, what? F1 minus. And I forgot my aqueous signs. Um, we should balance this, but being that this is a monoprotic acid, which we'll talk about later, meaning there's only one H per every F, this thing is already balanced. Okay, so now we have our equilibrium expression. And we can now use our da -na -na -na, ice or rice table. So R standing for reaction, I initial, C change, E equilibrium. So this is just like doing equilibrium problems. So let's put our reaction in. We get to ignore water because it's a liquid. So we're gonna have HF, and this is where our arrows would go. We'll make that part a little bit darker. Going to our products, H3O and F1 minus, one plus. All right, we know our initial concentration of HF, a 0.5 molar solution. So we have 0 0.50, and we are starting with no H3O and no F1 minus. So that means the, um, the reaction initially is going to go completely forward until we, re we reach equilibrium. All right, so what about our change? Well, we know that HF is going to change negatively by some x, thus H3O is going to change in a positive way by some x. So then what is it going to be at equilibrium? Well, I really didn't leave myself enough room in here, did I? Um, we've got HF is going to be 0 0.50 minus x. H3O is going to be 0 plus x or just x. And F is going to be 0 plus x or just x. So our um, Ka expression is Ka equals the concentration of H3O times the concentration of F divided by the concentration of HF. So we're going to have whoops, 7.1 times 10 to the negative 4 equals x times x over 0 0.50 minus x. So we can change that to x squared over 0 0.50 minus x. All right, now things are going to get slightly confusing, so listen up, possibly rewind if necessary. Um, we're going to end up with a problem where we're going to have to solve using the quadratic equation, right? Because we have an x squared and we have an x. Um, but I told you you're not going to have to use the quadratic equation, so what do we do here? Well, we're going to make an assumption. We know HF is a weak acid because it's not one of our six strong acids. So we can assume that the change, the X, is very, very little. Remember, the weak acids hardly ionize in water, like 10% or even less, maybe more like 5%, meaning that 
this x is not going to be very different from the 0.5. So we can say that 0 0.50 minus x equals approximately 0 0.50. We are indeed making an approximation. However, being that this is a weak acid, we can do this, and I will show you how to double check that this is an okay thing to do in a few minutes. Okay, so our equation is now going to be substituting in our approximation here, x squared over 0, 0 0.50. Okay, this isn't turned into a complete disaster here, so I'm going to erase some of this stuff to give us a little bit more room to work. And I'll rewrite our, our Ka expression. So we will have here, I'm going to use this and this. So we're going to have 7.1 times 10 to the negative fourth equals x squared over 0 0.50 and let's make a little room here all right so now the goal is to solve for x so to get rid of the 0 0.5 we'll multiply both sides by 0 0.5 giving us giving us 3.55 times 10 to the negative fourth equals x squared. All right, now to get rid of the x squared, we can square root both sides, giving us 0 0.019. Okay, so now we can figure out the equilibrium concentrations for HF, H3O, and F1- by substituting in the X in the equilibrium area. So for HF, we end up with 0.5 minus 0 0.019, giving us 0 0.48. For H3O, and actually for F as well, we're going to end up with an equilibrium concentration of 0 0.019. So now let's go back to our original question. We were looking for the pH of HF. To know the pH, how do you calculate pH? pH equals negative log concentration of H3O or concentration of H either way, which means the number we want is this one right here. So pH equals negative log of 0 0.019, giving us a pH of 1.72. So that is how we can use ionization constants. Okay, so I want to go back. Let me get rid of this stuff real quickly. Um, I want to go back and talk about how we can decide whether or not our approximation. Um, okay, so remember that we, for HF, we say it was 0 0.050 minus x, but we said because the x was so small, we could say that that equals approximately 0 0.50. So we should check to make sure that that's a reasonable approximation. Okay, because there's such a small ionization of weak acids, it's hard to measure super accurately so it has been um, found out that we can really only uh, measure the change in concentration of, of a weak acid with an accuracy of about 5%. So if X is less than 5% 
of the initial concentration, we can use this assumption. So let's, let's see if our, our approximation was usable. So we said our x was 0 0.019, and our initial concentration of HF was 0 0.50, and that gives us a, an x, a change in x of 0 0.038, or 3.8%, which is less than 5%, so we were okay using that approximation. All right, last quick topic is percent ionization. So percent ionization is another way to measure the strength of an acid. So the equation for percent ionization is the concentration of H3O, uh, which is really the concentration um, at equilibrium, right, um, divided by the initial concentration of the acid times 100 percent um, and a stronger acid is going to have a greater percent ionization and the, a more dilute solution of a weak acid um oh wow that that is kind of not good here how about will ionized less than a more concentrated solution of the same weak acid. So again, a more dilute solution of a weak acid will ionize less than a more concentrated solution of the same weak acid. All right, so a quick practice problem here um, from our last problem. Um, the concentration of H3O we came up with was um, 0.019. So percent ionization equals 0 0.019 over the initial concentration of our acid, hydrofluoric acid, which it was 0.5 times 100% gives us a percent ionization of 3.8%. So this is a fairly weak acid. All right, that's it for today. Have a good one.